Stranos has no central body or core. It's a swirling amassment of volcanic asteroids, metals, and floating lava, all held in loose formation by a low gravity magnetosphere. Weirdly, behaving magnetism is rampant. The synthetic metal fibers of our suits seem to attract every piece of loose metal we pass. We must be careful not to cause excess debris or we may find ourselves crushed under the weight, which may be hard as the metallic asteroids attract and repel one another in a perpetual motion of spinning, colliding, shattering hunks of metallic ore. Flowing throughout all this are floating rivers of lava that splash beautifully across asteroidal surfaces, reshaping them with heat, steam, and fire. Meanwhile, the nearby sun is co collapsing. It's buffeting the world with steady solar tempests that are predictable in timing, but not in temperament. This is a world of chaos, of movement, and of peril so profound it achieves a type of beauty. Simply navigating this awe-inspiring place will be harrowing. Stranos is a swirling, whirling death crucible of magnetic asteroids and super burning lava. Its environment behaves differently than most other planets. Nodes will rotate and switch locations and you will leap or be hilariously slung between them in wild ways. Sometimes you'll need to reposition the nodes in the environment, actually like moving them around to achieve your goals. Now, the joy of Stranos is figuring out how to use all your breakthroughs, anomalies, and other actions to traverse an environment that otherwise would be completely untraversable. So if figuring out creative ways to combo abilities and maximizing craziness is your jam, then so is Stranos. Now, meanwhile, just in case leaping around and rearranging a lava-laden asteroid field with nothing more at your disposal than your soft, flammable, fleshy bodies <sighs> wasn't enough, know too that much of the metallic compounds that compose the asteroids are attracted to your suit. Mm causing all manner of complications. Um, also the sky is basically on fire and the sun is imploding, so. Good luck with that. When you set up to play Stranos, first set up the game with the standard setup according to the framework rules. No. Yes. <laughs> then shuffle and stack the Solar Tempest cards face down in the area designated for planet specific cards. Set aside mystery cards A, B, C, and D until they are referenced. And then place the rare metals extractor and the polarity funnel tokens in the area designated for planet specific tokens. Place the red triangle trigger token on the third space of the timeline, not the second, on the third the third space of the timeline. Then each explorer tucks a magnetic burden card under their dashboard under the rest action, leaving the bottom half of the card exposed. The top half is for reference only. Explorers are free to peek at the top half when their memories fail them. Remove the laboratory from play. It cannot be constructed on Stranos. Place a marker or needlessly aggressive post-it note over the unearthed action because it cannot be used on Stranos. All right, let's dig into what makes this beautifully dangerous place so dangerously unique. On Stranos, many of the effects will cause the nodes to rotate. Account for this when setting up your survival task by leaving extra room around each environment card. Neglecting to do this will be lame. Just don't neglect to do this. All the survival tasks on Serenos have predetermined environment setups in which the nodes start play face down in specific arrangements. Now, effects will sometimes rotate, add resources to, or move these nodes before they're revealed. Now, process these effects as you would if the nodes were revealed. Rotate face down nodes as instructed. If materials are added to the face down node, then cool, add them to it. Just keep it face down and put the materials on it as normal. Now, when a node becomes revealed, maintain its current resources, orientation, and position. Think of Stranos like an asteroid field that's been all stirred up. Giant chunks of rock loosely grouped together, but moving around in an ever-changing formation. Many effects will change the location of nodes, sometimes leaving gaps between them. Some effects will allow you to float across these spaces like a proper space astronaut scientist. <laughs> now, the term space is used to distinguish between the environment cards that are nodes and potential locations of the environment cards, spaces. So this and this are both spaces. This one is empty and this one has a node on it, but both are spaces. Now many effects can cause these nodes or components to be placed a certain number of spaces away. In these instances you're counting the spaces, not the nodes. Again, a node is a card, a space is a space. For example, 
The Purple Explorer is here. An effect allows them to place themselves three spaces away. Count with us now. One, One two, two, three. three. Yes. Spaces should be easy to distinguish by there being a card-sized empty space. For example, this space is a space. So is this space and this one this. This, this is a space. Now joking aside, if the arrangement of the cards makes differentiating spaces difficult, you may use markers to indicate empty spaces as necessary. This spaces concept introduces a handful of new details to keep in mind. We're going to go through them here, but don't worry if you don't fully absorb them right now. Each of these are cataloged in the planet's travelogue for easy reference if you have any questions during play. Now, nodes can be placed onto empty spaces through effects. One of the ways this happens is when effects cause spaces to swap places. Now, don't overthink this. It means exactly what you think it means. When two spaces swap, everything on those spaces simply switch. For example, if there are nodes in each space, those two nodes and everything on them switch spaces. But if one space has a node on it and the other has nothing, then the node and the nothing switch places. Spaces are infinite, meaning if an effect lets you move a node, you can move it into any empty space you want. You're not confined to any sort of invisible border. Data and materials that would be placed onto an empty space, they're lost. Just put them back into their tray. Nothing ever occupies an empty space unless there's a node there for it to land on. Now, nodes across empty spaces are not considered adjacent. For example, these two spaces are adjacent. These two are not because of the huge gaping space between them. So if the Purple Explorer is on this node and they use an effect that allows them to place themselves on an adjacent node, then they may place themselves here as this node is adjacent, but not here because this node is not. So what's causing all this space swapping node rotating chaos you ask? Well, some of it will be caused by your actions, but also remember the thing about how the nearby sun is collapsing? Yeah, well it turns out that imploding suns aren't the super chill time that you thought they'd be. When the time marker reaches the red triangle trigger, draw and resolve a solar tempest card. Most nodes on Stranos have a magnetic charge that are either positive or negative. This has no gameplay consideration until it's referenced by an effect. Solar tempest cards provide such effects. For example, this solar tempest card states that you add a material to each positive node and then each positive node rotates 90 degrees clockwise for each positive node adjacent to it. The last unique thing about Strianos is the magnetically charged materials scattered around the node surfaces. These materials stick to your suit, causing additional effects each time you use your rest action. But the basics of this are quite simple. If an explorer and material ever occupy the same node, the material immediately sticks to the explorer, who places the material onto the bottom of their magnetic burden card. <laughs> and then when you use your rest action, resolve the effect of each material stuck to you, in addition to any other rest effects. Well, that's the gist of it. If you would add materials to your burden card, but the card is full, instead gain a distress card and discard the excess materials to the tray. Even if multiple materials are discarded in this way, you only gain one distress. There are two main ways to get materials off of you. You may spend materials stuck to yourself as you would materials in the group inventory, but you may not spend materials stuck to other explorers. Everyone has their own unique material supply on Serenos and it's stuck to their face. Also, once per turn, you may spend one power to remove material from yourself back to the general supply. If multiple explorers are on a node with materials, the explorers decide who the materials stick to. But you must do so in a way that one, fills as many magnetic burden spaces as possible, and then applies as much distress as possible. Not that you would want to, but due to the planet's unique composition, Luna may not scan for materials on Stranos. And remember, there is no laboratory or unearth action here either. Materials are weird here. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, and you'll be glad for this, no node may have more than two materials on it. If more would be added, they are lost and returned to the tray. And that's it. You're all set to load up a survival task and see just how well you can leap, sling, rotate, fling you and your crewmates toward a future in which you are more alive than melted. Space is hard. Because lava. Try not to die. <laughs>